welcome to the formula engineering classroom and in this part 2 lecture of centrifugal pump we will try to understand the concept of net positive suction head required net positive suction head available pumps arrangement in series and parallel so before understanding the concept of NPSH we have to understand few things so let's suppose here the tank and this tank is filled with water okay and over here is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure that I'm saying this is somehow 100 kilopascal now so at this state there is at one atmospheric pressure this water if I want to boil this water then let we are supplying some heat to this container in that case the temperature is going to be increased and at one atmospheric pressure or 100 kilopascal the water will start to boil at 100 degree centigrade okay now now let's suppose somehow that I'm closing the tank here and I'm removing some air above this one okay so now when I'm removing some air above this one in that case at this upper surface the pressure is going to be decreased this is going to be below 100 kilopascal so let's suppose now here the pressure is around and I'm saying this is 21 kilopascal so obviously in the initial case the pressure was 100 kilopascal now in this case the pressure is 21 kilopascal and now in this case when I want to boil this water so during the supply of heat this water will boil at around 61 degree centigrade temperature okay means when the pressure was 100 kilopascal the boiling point was 100 degree centigrade and when the pressure is 21 kilopascal the boiling point is now 61 degree centigrade so it's obvious when the pressure above this one is going to be decreased the boiling point is also going to be decreased okay so we can say that that is if 100 degree centigrade is the saturation temperature of this water so for this 100 degree centigrade the saturation pressure is p atmospheric that is 100 kilopascal but for 21 kilopascal saturation pressure the saturation temperature will be around 61 degree centigrade so as the pressure is going to be decreased in that case the boiling point is also going to be decreased here now one more thing here I want to tell you initially when the pressure initially when there was no heat supplied here when the pressure was 100 kilopascal in that case the vapor pressure exerted by the vapor of water above the surface was zero means initially the tank was open to atmosphere there is no heat supplied in that case the vapor molecules of water here are negligible so the vapor pressure exerted by the water vapor over the surface was zero but when we start to supply the heat over here in that case the molecules of vapor is going to be generated here and they will start to exert a pressure over the surface so at 100 degree centigrade the pressure exerted by the water vapor above the surface is exactly equal to this one that is 100 kilopascal means we can say that there is when the vapor pressure is equal to the saturation pressure in that case the boiling occur means here I am using the new term if vapor pressure so I am indicating V here suffix V for the vapor pressure it's equals to the saturation temperature so the saturation pressure in that case the boiling will occur okay so now in second case when I remove some pressure over here so when the pressure of the fluid is going to be decreased in that case the vapor pressure is also going to be increased so here the vapor pressure increases so means when here the pressure is 21 kilopascal there is some vapor pressure is available 
okay now in that case when the web press is available here and I will supply to heat so initially there is some web press is available and during the supply of heat also some vapors are also joining this vapor available here and the pressure increases again vapor pressure increases again and at a point when the vapor pressure is exactly going to be saturation pressure that is in this case this is 21 kilopascal the boiling will start okay so means in this case if I'm decreasing more and more pressure over here the amount of vapor content above the surface of water is going to be increased so the vapor pressure increases and somehow it is possible at the room temperature if the enough pressure is going to be reduced here or enough vapor pressure is going to be generated here this water will boil without any heat supply because in that case due to the removal of pressure here the vapor pressure is sufficiently high and that will approaches the saturation pressure and that's why at the room temperature it is possible that is it will boil the water so here we define a concept of vapor pressure and this concept will be required to understand the concept of NPSH now next we want to understand the cavitation cavitation so what is cavitation so let's suppose this is our pump so in this case this is the impeller I means this is the point where the fluid will enter in the pump so this is the impeller I so obviously the fluid is entering at this point because here the pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure or when the impeller will run when the impeller will run over here in that case the pressure at this impeller I is going to be decreased so let some fluid that we are considering the water and the water is entering through this impeller I so water has some temperature that is room temperature so let's suppose we are saying that is 25 degrees centigrade in that case we are saying water temperature is 25 degrees centigrade okay so when this 25 degrees centigrade water is moving or entering through this impeller I and here the pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure or the pressure is suction pressure so you can understand from this one let this is our absolute zero pressure line this is our absolute zero line and this is our atmospheric pressure line this is our PATM so now the impeller will, the impeller will run start to run in that case the pressure at this point in decreases so initially when the pump was not running the pressure was here is atmospheric pressure but after running the pressure is somewhat here let I'm saying this is at inlet pressure no so obviously in this case the pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure so if the pressure is atmospheric pressure in that case the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade but as here the pressure is less in that case the boiling point is also going to be decreased but if this pressure that is the, at the inlet is more or less then there is a chance that is for this temperature of water the water will start to boil over here because the pressure is less so if the pressure is less so the saturation temperature of, of that water it may be sufficient for this pressure and the water will start to boil over here and under the boiling or just before the boiling the bubbling will start so bubble will form under the water okay in water the bubble will form and that bubble will move inside the impeller and initially when here the pressure is low but when they are moving over the impeller blades in that case there is more pressure zone here high pressure zone here so when the bubbles are entering from the low pressure zone to high pressure zone so bubbles are here they are entering over this zone so they will start to burst because they are moving from the low pressure zone to high pressure zone so when they will start to burst so it is creating a hammering effect over the impeller blades and obviously in this case when this hem continuous F hammering effect is going on then the blade material is going to be 
pitting out or the blade there is a pitting will occur that blade material is going to be removed out by this bubble or by this hammering effect due to this one the over the blade they will form a cavity okay so obviously in this case the blade implant is going to be damaged and that formation of cavity is termed as cavitation okay so in this case obviously in this case the volume flow rate is also going to be decreased because the fluid initially when there was a fluid here liquid in the form of liquid but now the space is occupied by these bubbles means in that case they are occupying more space and less amount of fluid so in this case the discharge is also going to be decreased here so this is a problematic so this is problematic in this case we want to avoid the cavitation and to avoid the cavitation it is required that is the pressure at the impeller eye is just above the boiling pressure or the saturation pressure for particular temperature of the water so obviously this is also depending for the different different temperature of water means if you increase the temperature of water in that case maybe this pressure is the saturation pressure or if you are increasing more temperature of the water in that case maybe this pressure is sufficient to boil the water so it's also depending on the temperature of water so in this case we want to avoid the cavitation so to avoid the cavitation we required how much pressure head is just sufficient at the impeller eye which through which we can avoid the cavitation and that is defined as NPSH means we are using a term here N P S H that is defined as net positive suction head okay this is defined as net positive suction head so this is the head required at the impeller eye to avoid the cavitation so this is defined as net positive suction head now net positive suction head at the impeller eye can be calculated by using the formula you can write here that is p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g minus pv by rho g okay we can calculate the net positive suction head at the impeller i by using this formula so in this formula this p1 p1 is the absolute pressure at the impeller i you can say this is p1 this is this is the absolute value this is not suction value or vacuum pressure value or negative gauge value this is absolute value so p1 is the absolute pressure at the impeller i here and p1 p1 by rho g so by dividing by the rho g here we are providing this pressure terms in terms of meter or we are defining this is head so this is absolute pressure head at the impeller i now plus this v1 v1 is the velocity that is entering to, through this or velocity of fluid entering through this impeller i so again v1 square by 2g is providing what this is providing the kinetic head or dynamic pressure head we can say this one so this is the kinetic head entering to this point minus pv pv is the vapor pressure as we discussed here vapor pressure so pv by rho g is defined as vapor pressure head so by using this formula we can calculate what is the nps at the impeller i so the pump manufacturers are testing their pumps at the different different temperature of water and different different flow rate and the different different absolute pressure at the impeller i and by using different different values they are providing some values for a particular pump so that values are the required values for the that pump to avoid the cavitation so pump manufacturers are providing the n pieces required the n p s h required okay this is n pieces 
required here you can say this is required here that so we are simply saying this is npsh r or this is npsh required here so as we discussed in the our last lecture over the graph of head versus discharge so in the, this case we defined this was the relationship like that now I'm not providing the free delivery point or the point where the head is zero because the pumps are not basically running at that point in that case the pumps are not doing any useful work so we normally the manufacturers are not providing these points so normally you see the curve like that only up to this point or particular values so by testing they noticed or they provide the NPS is required and the NPS is required is increases with increment in discharge means as the discharge increases the NPS is required value is also increases so you can mark here value this value is actually very much less here so we can provide a value here like this this is NPSH required okay so NPSH required increases with the increment in discharge so what is NPSH available so let's suppose now our pump has some suction pipe over here okay so now in this case obviously we have some suction lift that if I'm denoting this is suction height that is HS or suction lift this is HS and in that case obviously there is some length of pipe here so over the length there is some frictional losses over here okay so in that case we can say there is also HFS so there is HS there is HFS in this case so initially let's suppose if I'm saying when the pump is not running at this point at the impeller I there is atmospheric pressure head obviously okay this is atmospheric pressure head. so let we can say that that is this term is we are defining in terms of rho g this is atmospheric pressure head so we have this much of value now now we required to decrease the pressure at the impeller I to lift the water at this much height that we are defining HS so means in that case I require decrease the pressure for this height so now the absolute pressure head at the impeller I is PA by rho G minus HS means initially we are here this is PA by rho G now we are removing some value of HS here so now we are here okay because we are subtracting this value from this PA by rho G now obviously we want to overcome the frictional head losses in this piping system so to overcome the frictional head loss we also use some pressure the impeller I so again I required this one okay so let I want to also remove this one HFS sorry HFS so now we are here so now at the impeller I the absolute pressure is this much the absolute pressure we are putting is this much here so means actually this value we are defining here and obviously there is some velocity there is some there is some velocity also in this pipe okay with the V1 and we want to maintain this velocity here so that's why we want to remove some more pressure over here so we will also subtract this one that is the velocity head so this is the absolute pressure head available at the pump inlet okay so let I'm drawing this figure again here because this is consisted here so this is our absolute zero 
right i'm presenting in terms of meter this is absolute zero meter head and this is our atmospheric pressure head okay so initially when the pump was not running here the pressure head was atmospheric pressure head but we want to raise this fluid from here to here so we want to decrease the pressure at the impeller i so we want to decrease let this is our hs so now we are here so now this is our pressure head available at the impeller i now we want to overcome the frictional losses so again we want to decrease the pressure a little bit more so this is our hfs so now we are over here so that at the impeller i this is the absolute pressure head and now we want to overcome this velocity head so we want to decrease a little bit more here so this is v square upon 2g so now we are here around so this is the pressure head at the impeller i now and you can notice here this pressure is actually pi that is absolute pressure head the impeller i that i that i write in n is required that is p1 by rho g okay so in this formula so i can write this is p1 by rho g here so now so we can write that is n p s h and i'm replacing the value of p1 by rho g of this value in this formula so i'm writing this is p a by rho g minus h s minus h f s minus v1 square upon 2g and here is plus v1 square upon 2g and minus pv by rho g okay so this is minus value of v1 square upon 2g this is plus value so this is out here so now the remaining terms are pa by rho g then minus hs then minus hfs then minus pv by rho g so let i'm writing this term in terms of head here so i'm writing pa by rho g is ha atmospheric pressure head then hs suction lift then hfs frictional head loss then hv that is vapor pressure head so now this npss is defined as npss available and this is a we can measure by the use of this formula so the pump manufacturers are providing the value of npss is required and we can calculate account our required what is npss is available okay by using this formula for our piping system or for our suction piping system here now you can notice here if you want to increase the discharge over here so the discharge increases in that case the velocity is going to be increased and the velocity is going to be increased then hf is going to be increased okay so as the hfs is going to be increased so if this value is going to be increased in that case if hfs is going to be increased in that case we are moving more down over here because this hfs is going to be increased so we can say that with increment in the discharge the npss available is going to be decrease and i told you that is npss required with is increases with the increment in the discharge over here so let here i'm drawing again h and q curve so this is our npsh required that is increases with increment in discharge and this is our npss available that is going to decrease with increment in the discharge because hfs increases so means 
there is a intersection point over here where the NPS is required and the NPS available are intersecting. So in this case, when the NPS available is greater than means if let if I'm drawing a vertical line over here that is passing through this intersection point. So that this reason in this reason that is left hand side of this line where everywhere is NPS available is greater than the NPS required. So no cavitation will occur because our availability is more than the requirement. So in this reason there is no cavitation. There is no cavitation. But in this right hand side as our NPS available is less than the NPS required the cavitation will occur here. There is sorry cavitation occur here. So left hand side there is no cavitation when the NPS available is greater than the NPS required and right hand side where the NPS required is greater than the NPS available the cavitation will occur. So this is the point here that is NPS available will always be greater than the NPS required if we don't want any cavitation in our pump. So this zone this side zone is the no cavitation zone means up to this range we can easily operate our pump without any cavitation but if we are crossing this point here then the cavitation will start and this cavitation as we discussed will damage the pump and the pump operation will be noisy there are vibration in the pump and the discharge is not sufficient here in that case there are so many things here so it is suggested that there is our pump operation will always be take place in this no cavitation zone okay and again I'm saying that is for no cavitation NPSH available will always be greater than NPSH required okay So now I think the point is clear. So in the part 3 lecture we will discuss about the pump in series and pump in parallel. And guys if you like the video then please subscribe the channel, comment your doubts and share the knowledge as much as you can. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself and best of luck.